Thank you for joining us. I'm Chris Woods, director of the Oriental Institute. I'd like to welcome you to this member's lecture. And I'd like to extend special thanks to our members without whose support this program would not be possible. And for those of you who are not members, we certainly hope you'll consider supporting us. Today, we have a very special speaker whom it's my privilege to introduce, Dr. Abdul Amir Alhamdani, who until recently served as Minister of Culture, Tourism, and Antiquities in Iraq. Dr. Alhamdani is by training an anthropological archaeologist, specializing in Near Eastern and Mesopotamian archaeology. He received his BA degree in Ancient Archaeology from Baghdad University in 1987, and he earned a master's in archaeology from the Department of Anthropology of the State University of New York at Stony Brook in 2013. And Dr. Alhamdani received his PhD in 2015, also from SUNY Stony Brook, with a dissertation entitled The Shadow States, the Archaeology of Power in the Marshes of Southern Mesopotamia. Dr. Alhamdani specializes in using remote sensing, GIS, and geospatial techniques in archaeology, as well as in regional archaeological survey, internal systematic survey, and landscape archaeology. And in addition to serving as the Minister of Culture, Tourism, and Antiquities in Iraq, Dr. Alhamdani has served as the Chairman of the State Board of Antiquities and Heritage, the Director of the Antiquities Office of Dikar Province, and the Director of the Natsuria Museum, and he has led numerous excavations in Iraq. I also want to add that Dr. Alhamdani has been a great friend to the OI, having been a strong advocate for us in resuming our excavations at Nippur and in expanding our archaeological concession to include the sites of Drehem and Tel Lehem. Today, Dr. Alhamdani will be speaking about a topic of great interest to us as we resume our excavations in southern Iraq. Iraq's heritage, an update. We hope you will enjoy this online OI members lecture. Hello, everyone. This is Abdul Amir Alhamdani from Iraq. Today, I will be talking about the current situation of Iraq heritage and update to the situation of Iraqi archaeological heritage, uh, specifically during the last two years, 2019 and the first half of 2020, when I was the Minister of Culture and Antiquities in Iraq. So today I will be giving you an update to the current situation, starting with the fieldwork, excavation and survey projects that have been done by uh, national and international expeditions, and uh, then the new digital database of archaeological sites in Iraq, and then the uh, uh, current situation of the world heritage uh, sites, and then I will be also talking about uh, Mosul heritage, uh, the Nineveh province heritage, and uh, then I will be talking about the Iraqi uh, museums and uh, the, uh, you know, specifically the Central Museum in Baghdad and the, the provincial uh, museums. And then I will be talking about effort of restoring stolen artifacts and uh, protecting archaeological sites. Then I will be also talking about the uh, publications, specifically the uh, Sumer Journal. And then finally, I will be talking about the, the cultural relationship between the State Board of Antiquities or between Iraq in general and the international community, including the institutions, universities of, and uh, museums. So for the excavation, indeed, in 2019, you know, most of the work have been done in 2019 and nothing been done in 2020 because of the current situation of COVID-19. Starting from the first uh, half of 2019, there was uh, there were a lot of expedition, international ex expedition. But before going to that, I will give a, a brief description of the national effort, uh, the, the State Board of Antiquities, 
uh, have done salvage excavation to rescue some of archaeological sites that been damaged by uh, uh, modern development. Building a new roads and infrastructure could uh, affect the sites. So the State Board of Antiquities have sent teams to rescue these uh, sites to to dig these you know sites, and that's the you know usual or in the normal work of the State Board of Antiquities. Also, the State Board of Antiquities uh, have gave uh, you know permission to some universities, Department of Archaeology in some uh, universities, specifically in the, in the south, to carry out a uh, field school, to carry out excavation, to train the student and the faculty's ways of de- collecting data and ways of doing excavation, practical work after uh, taking theoretical classes, they would go to the to the field and do excavation. So, for example, last year, uh, the uh, University of Babylon, uh, to the to the south of uh, the city of uh, Babylon, has carried out a, a excavation in an old Babylonian settlement called Dilbat. So they did discover a temple dates back to the uh, to the Hammurabi era, and uh, uh, they will continue working like that. So, this kind of permits will will be given also to other uh, universities. Mosul University, for for example, uh, has applied last year to get a permit to work in Tel Qoyunjak, the ancient city of Nineveh. And they will do so uh, next year, as well as uh, University of Kufa and University of Samara. So for the, then for the international expeditions, indeed, last year we had expedition from all over the world, American and European uh, universities. They have carried out excavations in the south as well as well as in the uh, Kurdistan region of Iraq. So for the South, uh, indeed, we had uh, the University of Pennsylvania. They did work at the, the ancient city of uh, Nippur, and this is their first season to map the site and to do some sounding. And also Stony Brook University, they have uh, done the, the, their third season digging at the ancient city of Ur. But they will stop excavate the site, and the permit will be given to Pennsylvania University, which is also uh, they have been dug in the, in the, in ancient city of uh, Lagash. A team uh, last year uh, dug at uh, at Lagash, and uh, so they will continue both you know working in Lagash and at Ur. And as well as some American uh, universities in the north, in the, in the Kurdistan region, working there. British expeditions also were there. The British Museum did work at Gursu, the site of Tallo, which is located to the, to the north of Ur and to the west of uh, Lagash. And also a team from Manchester University uh, carried out an excavation uh, the third you know, season of them to work in uh, a, a site called Khaybar uh, to the north of Basra w- which uh, dates back to the Alexander era uh, some some like a port that been established by uh, Alexander the Great and, uh, and du- during the Seleucid and Parthian uh, period and they did you know discover a lot of buildings over there uh, public buildings, so they will continue uh, uh, working uh, for next year. The Italian expedition also have dug in the ancient city of Nina. Uh, Roma La, La Sapienza uh, have carried out the fourth uh, season in uh, the ancient city of uh, Nina, which is located to the south of Lagash. Um, that's back to the early dynastic era. And then there is also another expedition, another team from La Sapienza did work that carried out the, the eighth season in site called Abu Tbera. That's back to the same period, but uh, next to uh, Ur. And there also a, a team, an Italian team, worked in Tel Bugarat, which is located to the 
northeast of uh, Nippur, uh, mainly from uh, the New Babylonian period. Now, the French expedition that used to work in Larsa before the 1990 war of Kuwait war, they returned back to the site of Larsa and carried out their 14th season both in Larsa, uh, the major city, the major urban center of Larsa and the nearby small obedient settlement of Tel al-Awaili. And uh, so for them, it is kind of continue working there and return back to their field work after almost uh, 30 years. And the, then the German expedition, also they did work in Uruk, ancient city of Uruk. A team worked there to continue their seasons and their, their work, which started, you know, years ago. So they, uh, last year, they mainly focus on, uh, you know, preparing the site for conservation and also assisting the damage to uh, to the site and also do come you know collecting data from uh, fr from outside the city wall and uh, the same team did work also in the pre-islamic city of Hira which is uh, located near Kufa uh, in the uh, area of Najaf so also they kind of conducted a survey in coordination with the State Board of Antiquities and the uh, University of Kufa to survey, to map the city of you know, Hira. And the site been uh, really affected by building an airport and uh, Najaf airport, so a lot of activities were, were going on there to rescue this area. And also another German team uh, worked in the Tel Toba, which is a part of the ancient city of Nineveh, a team from Heidelberg University. They did carry out a, a excavation last year. Their first you know, season started last year to work in an Assyrian settlement, small Assyrian settlement underneath the shrine of Nabi Yunus in Mosul, where they discovered uh, indeed an Assyrian palace dates back to the Asur Haddun era. And then the uh, Russian uh, Russian expedition also worked uh, there last year in 2019 in a place called uh, Dahelia. So Dahelia is next to Aridu. It is a you know major uh, urban center, almost uh, 60 hectares. Um, this back to the to the to the to the period uh, after Hammurabi reign. Late old Bab uh, late old Babylonian period, which could fit with the uh, with the era of the first Sealand. So in my dissertation, I was focusing on uh, surveying the area in the Arido plain. So I came out to the uh, hypothesis that the site of uh, Dehelia could house the uh, capital city of the. First Sealand dynasty, and the site been surveyed by by uh, Henry Wright in 1966, 65, 66. But uh, 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 a new uh, satellite images show, show that the site uh, has a density of uh, architecture as well as city wall and a port. So uh, I uh, kind of uh, proposed that to the to the uh, Russian uh, expedition, so they have started working uh, on the site, mapping the site, collecting data, and uh, doing soundings. And the uh, result, the finding, indeed, uh, kind of approved that it is it you know dates back to the late old Babylonian period, uh, which could fit with the uh, with the uh, with the era or the time of the. Uh, first Sealand dynasty. And then uh, the Slovak expedition uh, worked at the ancient city of Umma, southeast of uh, Nippur, and the city was heavily uh, attacked by looters. So it kind of, you know, salvage excavation to rescue the site besides, you know, doing their scientific work. So they, 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 they kind of carried out their third uh, pro uh, season there and hopefully we'll continue working there to rescue the site. Everybody knows that you know Umma been attacked by looters since 2000, 
uh, and three and even before that indeed so it is indeed a good opportunity to safeguarding the site now that's for the south and the the uh, the uh, what called the center and the north of, of Iraq but also in Kurdistan region American and European universities they also have done uh, field work there excavation survey and conservation during the 2019 um, uh, mainly in Arbil and Soleimania uh, provinces so they will also hopefully continue next year to do so their uh, uh, excavations so that's for uh, excavation and then survey a project also the state board of antiquities have carried out some you know project uh, by itself uh, collecting data from this uh, fr from the site uh, the employees of the state board in in each you know, a province they you know the, uh, on you know daily or normal job there to go to the field to do some inspection and to, to also document some of the sites and so every every day we would have a, a new survey or an, uh, a new a new team going to the field to collect data but also the state board of, of antiquities has kind of you know, coordinate with some international expeditions to do survey intensive systematic survey uh, specifically with the Italian expeditions, uh, there was uh, an Italian a project called Qadis, uh, who mainly trained the staff of the universities of Kufa and uh, Qadisiyah to, between Nippur and Kufa to train the staff and the student ways of collecting d data and assist the condition of these sites. Of course, that with, coordinate with the State Board of Antiquities, and there also were were two expeditions surveying, one in Nineveh and Tanqoinjak, led by Italian expedition to assess the condition of the site and also to collect some data. But also there is also uh, there was also an Italian expedition working in the area to the south east of Baghdad. The, 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 the area been surveyed by Robert Adams alongside the Tigris um, to collect you know data to document the archaeological site and irrigation systems. Uh, New York University also have done a sur survey in the uh, region of Umma which is uh, located to the south of uh, Nippur and uh, to uh, you know collect data and document site also uh, uh, Iraqi Italian expedition working uh, last year uh, in the area of uh, Kufa the Islamic city of Kufa so they worked in the, in the hinterland and the countryside of Kufa for survey and for documentation so now the new database of archaeological sites in Iraq indeed we do have uh, the Atlas Iraqi map issued in 1971 having 7500 sites and that's need to be updated because it, the data is getting old and also it's paper uh, we could lose it at any time so when I was in New York I started the project in 2012 when I was doing my PhD dissertation in 2012 I started a project to uh, digitize the archive of you know maps Iraqi army maps uh, uh, as the state board of antiquities map any available map I digitize it and you know coordinate it with the uh, uh, GIS and create a shell file of each of these 15,000 sites and so the data I collected it was from the previous survey or project in Iraq uh, by for example uh, Robert Adams, uh, Tony Wilkinson, uh, Henry Wright, uh, Maguire Gibson. I got this data and digitized it. Then my survey, myself uh, and my team started surveying some of the uh, areas in the south, collecting almost data from 1,200 sites, adding them to the Atlas map. Uh, those specifically in the areas that never been surveyed, like in the, in the marshes and also the western uh, desert to the west of Arido. 
So the total now is 15,000 archaeological sites, but it could be more than that because every day we would discover a new site either never seen by uh, previous surveys or were covered by you know desert uh, sand dunes or agricultural fields so now we discover between time to time we would discover a new sites so the total now is uh, 15,000 archaeological sites and uh, we have uh, show file in GIS including all the data the important data like the ethnographic geographic his, uh, historical and archaeological data for this site it could be the the core of the database of archaeological sites in Iraq and I gave this data to the State Board of Antiquity to the central institution and then to the uh, you know to the uh, antiquities office in each uh, you know province of uh, Iraq so our colleague would go there to the to the field and check this you know data and assist the uh, the condition of these sites as well as you know monitoring them and also this data could be useful for the State Board of Antiquities when they plan to give uh, permits to the modern uh, development uh, projects so they would go to the GIS and open the file of uh, this map and see if there is a way uh, to give you know permits to install or to establish a new in infrastructures for example so that, that's uh, really could be useful for the future uh, planning for uh, modern projects. Uh, so the, for example, just to give an, uh, an idea, so the total uh, number 15,000 among those uh, sites only two, maybe less than 2% been excavated. So we can measure on, we can evaluate uh, how much work is waiting for us to working there and to do uh, field work there in, 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 in Iraq. Also in 2018 and through 2019 and 20 um, started a project with the universities of Oxford, Durham and Lister and a project called Endangered Archaeology in the Middle East and North Africa. I was the the the, uh, the director of the the training manager of um, the team in Durham University, so we trained uh, employees of the State Board of Antiquities. A team from these three universities came to Baghdad in uh, late 2018, and through 2019, we uh, selected 10 of them. I mean, the 20 employees been uh, trained uh, in using GIS and remote sensing, using satellite images, collecting data through satellite images and uh, monitor the site and assist the condition of them and then created a database a digital uh, database so in the end of 2019 we were able to select 10 of them they were kind of you know getting uh, skilled in that uh, way so the 10 employees uh, we, we created a, a, a national team to create a national a registration or uh, national record of archaeological sites. So this would be uh, the core of the team that could build the Iraqi National Archive of Archaeological Site to add more data and to continue observing and monitoring the archaeological sites. And that's really a result of two years of training. Then the World Heritage Site of the UNESCO we have almost 11 sites, uh, natural and cultural uh, sites on the list, including Hatra, Ashur, Samara, the citadel of Arbil, uh, Babylon last year, Uruk, Rido, Ur, and the southern marshes, which have four components, all of them are natural. And then uh, that's not enough for, for Iraq. So last year we created a national team to kind of to uh, prepare to nominate a new sites, so we have a tentative list of 12 new sites to be nominated to the UNESCO in the coming years, including the the Azidian Temple of Lalash, which is located to the north of uh, Mosul, and it is indeed the oldest temple of Azidian in the world, and uh, everybody knows the story of what happened to the Azidian in Jabal Sinjar and other areas when being attacked by ISIS. 
So we put that uh, just to support the Yazidian to put you know their temple on the the world heritage list, and then the uh, the the list includes also Nimrud, the medieval city of uh, Mosul, the the medieval city of Baghdad, and also the ancient the Islamic city of Wasud. We do have uh, Taisafun, the Cairo here, and we have the. Uh, the uh, cemetery of uh, Najaf um, and other uh, cultural and natural components to be nominated to the UNESCO uh, site. For Babylon, indeed, as you, you, you know, it was inscri inscribed to the uh, World Heritage List uh, in 2019 in Azerbaijan. So since that time, we started also doing some conservation, what's called kind of corrective conservation to the, the old one which uh, uh, had been carried out in in 1980s during Saddam era. So we need to uh, correct this this conservation in some temples that uh, carried out in in the 1980s uh, because it was against the, the uh, regulation of the UNESCO. And also we got some support from uh, the World uh, Monument Fund and uh, other institutions to support us to manage the site and to also the Iraqi government last year they kind of gave um, uh, kind of a budget to do conservation to the temples and to the monuments uh, at the site of Babylon and also to do some touristic uh, activities or touristic infrastructures within and outside the site and so we'll continue working as uh, like that for Samarra also the Iraqi uh, uh, government last year they gave a, a budget to the local authority to do uh, work here and coordinate with the State Board of Antiquities and also in the marshes also uh, some touristic activities have done last year in 2019. Also, we have a project here to, to build a new touristic village in Chibaish in the central uh, of the marshes, in the center of the marshes, as well as a project at Erido or in Uruk. So that's for the World Heritage Sites. And then uh, Mosul in the area of Nineveh, a province in the, in the northwest of Iraq. Um, ISIS uh, has attacked uh, the medieval city of uh, Mosul other, and other, um, ad other archaeological sites in the hinterland in the, co in the countryside of Mosul, specifically in Nineveh Plain and Sinjar era, destroying uh, uh, Azidian, uh, Christian and Muslim uh, archaeological sites, shrines, churches and uh, Yazidian temples there. So to do so, we have a kind of uh, coordinates uh, SBH and Giraffe ha has coordinates with the with the with the UNESCO and other institutions, uh, international in institutions, to do uh, some you know conservation and reconstruction for the um, worship places in Mosul. And as you can see here, it is uh, the medieval city of uh, Mosul. Here is the main street called uh, Shara al Farouk al Farouk Street and you can see here the remains of what ha what has been left of the uh, Nuri uh, mosque and this is the dome of the of the of the mosque and from other side it's the the minaret of uh, Al Hadba so as you can see the, the scale of, uh, of damage um, to the city uh, so we started with the uh, UNESCO, indeed, a project to reconstruct the Mosul, uh, the Hadba uh, Minaret and the mosque itself, together with other, you know, complex. Uh, uh, the complex of uh, and Nuri uh, has also uh, two churches in the Farouk Street, besides the mosque of uh, Nuri and the, you know, Minaret. So our team from the State Board of Antiquities indeed started last year collecting the material, the ancient you know material, uh, put them in a place and secure them and also kind of do some kind of measurement 
taking place to to uh, to assist the uh, the foundation of the minaret and do uh, some geomorphological work there to see how, what, what was the situation the status of the foundation and um, so uh, our teams like from UNESCO from uh, the state board of antiquities and from the local authorities came out to the area uh, to to the uh, to the uh, to the idea that we have to build a, a, a minaret looks like the old one because we need to 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 kind of to follow the advice from the, the you know local community they want to see the same exact um, you know minaret um, so the, it's still debatable between uh, specialists architecture archaeologists and other historians to uh, came to the idea what we uh, can do in terms of building the minaret but you know mostly all the ideas led to to that we have to build a minaret uh, looks like the old one before the destruction and also to um, do some conservation to to churches in the area so it would be a kind of a complex having all these uh, uh, worship places together to show solidarity and kind of uh, living in peace for all uh, minorities and uh, ethnic and religious groups in Mosul. And this is also applied to the uh, other part of the medieval city of Mosul. Here we have a church and here we have a mosque. So with the European Union project, we would start in the last year, we should uh, that we have to start, you know, conservation in some of heritage buildings, private and uh, public buildings, mosque and church in the in the area just to give an ex example of what we need to do indeed uh, the city is really huge the medieval city of uh, Mosul is really big so we need to start uh, focusing on specific areas specific street or uh, you know neighborhood of of the city to give an, ex an example for f a future what we need to do indeed how, how, how we coordinate our work with different you know parties from UNESCO to the European uh, union to the authorities, the the local authorities, some of uh, 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 you know religious institution, they kind of uh, this um, location or this you know buildings uh, belong to them, as well as we we need to safeguard the uh, the heritage of um, Mosul, and this uh, is to be co you know controlled by the state board of antiquities under the Iraqi antiquities law. Everything uh, has to be done under the control of the State Board of Antiquities. We don't want to build a new building. We need to follow the regulation of the UNESCO to do the right conservation for these buildings. Also, on the other side of the, the city of Mosul, there is the shrine of uh, Nabi Yunus, and uh, it, it is indeed it's, it's called Tal Toba, and it is the other part of uh, Nineveh city, the ancient city of uh, Nineveh. And the uniqueness of this site, it has uh, an Assyrian settlement with the Assyrian palace and uh, medieval Islamic shrine for uh, the Prophet Joanna and also an, a new modern um, usement. So we'll have a complex of these th three elements uh, th th that we started with uh, Heidelberg Uni University to uh, uh, to first to clean the area and to dig and clean and dig the settlement the Assyrian settlement because ISIS have dug tunnels inside the uh, city and uh, so we the the expedition the team cleaned the uh, the tunnel and d did discover. Uh, winged bulls and uh, walls with inscription of cuneiform writing. So the plan is to do conservation, digging, excavation, conservation, and rebuild the, sh the sh uh, shrine together with the uh, modern uh, amusement. So Heidelberg University indeed started working last year uh, for two seasons indeed, uh, focusing mainly on, on excavation and the settlement in the Assyrian settlement and hopefully with the uh, coming you know years we'll continue working to reconstruct the shrine uh, and coordinate with the uh, religious authority in the city of Mosul. And then for Nimrud, the Assyrian 
capital city of uh, Nimrud, which is located to the east of Mosul. Indeed, it been attacked in 2014 by ISIS, uh, destroying the whole visible architectures like the ziggurat, uh, the temple of Ishtar, and the northeast palace. Here, as you can see, you, you can see it, it was it was destroyed by ISIS, and the, there were a lot of winged bulls, uh, the so-called Lamaso, being destroyed by ISIS. And here you you can see the remains of these you know winged bulls. So together, the uh, the State Board of Antiquities and the Smithsonian Institute institution, they started last year uh, collecting the broken parts of these uh, artifacts and put them in a secure place and hope, hoping to return back um, to do to to make also uh, measures of conservation and collecting data and uh, safeguarding the site but thus it uh, that could take you know years because the city is heavily been demolished by isis uh, in 2014 and the same case could apply also to the uh, ancient city of Ashur, another Assyrian capital uh, located uh, to the south of uh, Mosul alongside to the Tigris and bit if affected indeed this time not by ISIS but by natural phenomena, wind and rain. Also the city is located uh, very close to the Tigris so it also been affected by erosion by the, the Tigris. So we started last year a project to safeguarding and protect the ziggurat, the remains of the ziggurat. We started uh, working there. And then I gave a, a permit, we gave a permit to the American University in Iraq, uh, Soleimania, to lead, to lead a project to mapping the site and do some kind of conservation in the temples as well as we have you know taken measures last year to to protect the city from erosion of the tigris hatra also uh, a pre-islamic or a, you know hellenistic classical uh, city located to the west of mosul and it's been attacked also by isis destroying the statues and the monuments the the temples by ISIS. So last year we sent a team from SBAH, the State Board of Antiquities, to collect the uh, a broken you know, artifacts and put them in a, 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 a secure store, uh, hoping that we uh, will come back again to uh, assist the condition of the site and do some conservation together with the Italian team. Then for Iraqi museum and other provincial museums the Iraqi museum last year we opened the museum and for uh, the public from from nine in the morning to six in the evening and this is the first time indeed for the museum to to stay to be to be open uh, even after the work day and uh, at, the, at the weekend also it, it is open for the public and also some kind of conservation and restoration for antiquities uh, is taking place over there every uh, between time to time we would uh, receive artifacts from the you know population from the people as well as from other governmental institutions uh, to be restored in the uh, museum uh, also the uh, other museums that are open that are Basra Museum, Nasiriyah Museum, Muthanna Museum and Babylon Museum those four museums are also open to the public, but we need also to open a new museums that are almost done, like uh, the Museum of Kirkuk uh, to the to the north of Baghdad and the Museum of Maysan to the uh, southeast of Baghdad. But also Mosul Museum is really important for us to see it's open again to the public and to the population, to the community. To the society of uh, Mosul, it is you know remarkable a place for the people of Mosul, and again it is also located within the medieval uh, section or sector of uh, Mosul. So that's the uh, the current situation, the current status of the museum after liberation uh, the city from ISIS. We started a project with the Smithsonian Institute to kind of to evaluate the situation and start uh, reconstruction 
the uh, building in the geomorphological work that been done to the foundation state that it, it is in a good condition uh, that's been approved that it is in a good condition so after doing the conservation the reconstruction we also have the phase two which is displaying artifacts in the museum which does, that can be done and coordinate between the Iraqi museum and the Louvre in, in museum and uh, the, the work uh, unfortunately stopped because of the COVID-19. Now restoring artifacts in protecting site. For restoring artifacts indeed we do have a, a kind of recovery department at the Iraqi museum observing and watching every day online what's going on there regarding to the um, stolen artifacts. So uh, last year we were able to restore uh, in hundreds of artifacts from all over the world here and in, in this photo in the Iraqi Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, we were able to restore uh, hundreds of uh, cuneiform tablet from the British Museum and also we uh, recovered or restored other uh, in hundreds from uh, Jordan, Emirates, Saudi Arabia um, U.S. and also other uh, in other countries. Uh, for the U.S. indeed, we the Penny Museum uh, gave almost more than 300 cuneiform fragment and uh, tablets to the Iraqi embassy in, in, in D.C. and we are uh, ho hoping also to restore other uh, stolen artifacts. We ha we do have you know thousand of artifacts in the US. For example, in Cornell University, we do have almost 10,000 uh, cuneiform tablets they need to be taken back to Iraq, to the Iraqi museum, and also other artifacts from um, Hobby Lobby Company and the Bible Museum in Washington, DC. Um, it is indeed the international com uh, you know, community to help us to re restore these uh, you know, artifacts and we are uh, you know calling the international community museums uh, uh, you know galleries to uh, you know, help us but the 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 very difficult uh, issue is the you know the private collections that we never seen in the media or in the galleries and uh, so th this is could be done if the international community support Iraq in doing so. Uh, for protecting archaeological sites, indeed, we have a department of police in specifically for uh, protecting archaeological sites. So they deploy patrols um, uh, daily or weekly to safeguarding and to inspect these archaeological sites, which is uh, specifically those are located in the south in the alluvial plain in the in the desert to safeguard them or, or to inspect the the guards and to see um, what they can do there um, between time to time they will capture uh, uh, stolen artifacts and restoring them to the Iraqi museum um, for uh, publication um, in 2019 we have also published um, some you know books on monographs related to the antiquities, and uh, also we issued the uh, the the uh, six to five issue of Sumer, the the journal of Sumer, which is uh, issued for the first time in nineteen forty five, and still continue. And this is the sixty uh, fifth uh, uh, issue, and uh, it has uh, two sections: Arabic and foreign 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 language. Um, for the uh, English uh, section, for the foreign uh, language section, indeed, um, we came to the idea that we could uh, create a, an, edu an editorial board to review the articles, uh, scholars from US and uh, Europe. Thanks for them to, to accept that they being a part of the editorial board. This is, could uh, help us in improve the the quality of Sumer and also to encourage other scholars to you know, publish in Sumer uh, the result of their uh, fieldwork. 
has to be uh, uh, published in Sumer. So um, we could say that we'll continue working uh, with, we could add some people for uh, some scholars, I'm sorry, to the editorial board to improve the work of Sumer. And finally, I will be talking about the relationship, the cultural relationship between uh, the state board Iraq in general with the international community in different w ways. Uh, training the people, uh, doing field work and, ex and excavation, uh, coordinate the, the work in terms of the, the scientific work for, you know, a publication, uh, conferences, and also to restore the stolen uh, in artifacts. So these are the, uh, the main institutions that the SBS deals with, but this is not the only institutions that uh, we do have a, a good relationship with all universities, uh, centers and international institutions. And we believe that Iraqi antiquities or Mesopotamian uh, heritage is the civilization of all the world and it's a, a, a global task to safeguarding and to preserve Iraqi heritage. So I will uh, take this opportunity and call all uh, the world to the international institution to support Iraq, to support Iraq in uh, you know preserving its rich uh, heritage, uh, conservation, documentation, and also to train the staff of the state of antiquities and also the, the most important thing is to restore its stolen legacy. Um, finally, I would you know, like to thank the Oriental Institute of uh, Chicago University to give me this opportunity to talk with you, all, all of you, and uh, specifically for uh, Christopher Woods and other uh, staff. The technical uh, staff of the Oriental uh, Institute who's, uh, who uh, support me or who, who um, stand with me to do this uh, presentation. Uh, and uh, I would like to thank you all for listening to, to me and uh, thank you so much. For over 100 years, the OI has been a leading research center for the study of ancient Middle Eastern civilizations. Join us in uncovering the past and learn about the beginnings of our lives as humans together. Become a member by visiting oi.uchicago.edu slash member.